Hello and welcome to the show and welcome to a new series of Downhill Chaos. Nobody picked up on the fact that I said it was going to be the last main uh, or the last regular GTA 5 Downhill Chaos. You just thought I was cancelling the series. No, the series will carry on. We are just moving over to Beam NG Drive. This is the map that I picked. It took a long time to decide on a place to use. This map uh, is called Cliff Version 2.0. I'll put a link in the description. It's a very cool map. Mainly designed for throwing your vehicles off some very large hills um, and crashing. We're not going to be using that. There is a road that goes down the side. It took me so long to find a map that had the sort of road that I wanted. Because uh, I wanted a road that A went down hill and um that, that's kind of important for this series uh, it also had to be not too bumpy I, I was doing the death road rally and i just couldn't do it with a lot of normal vehicles because it was so bumpy uh, a lot with like sort of the covert and some of the rear wheel drive vehicles it was so bumpy they just couldn't really make it down there without going all sort of weird uh, it also had to be short enough i wanted it to be sort of like one minute 20 times to get towards the bottom um because yeah i don't want to have a really really long course and most of the roads on here are really rather long it's a little bit more simplistic in some way than the Mount Chiliad route, it kind of just snakes its way down the mountain, you can see here. However, there are some nasty jumps. There's that one there, uh, sort of like a tabletop jump. There are also some flower gods that I'm not sure what's going on over there. Um, there's also a floating rock. Ah, uh, don't ask. <laughs> but yeah, the course is a little bit more simplistic in some ways, in that it's just sort of a zigzag down the mountain. There are a couple of very, very nasty bumps. There's that one, there's the one earlier, there's this one here that's kind of a jump over a plant. Particularly nasty. Uh, that one there. And then we've got a very steep section to finish the course off. And then we end uh, here, where the, where the sort of surface changes. Got to put the brakes on pretty sharpest, so that you don't run into the building. Um, so yes, this is the new course. Um, there are some... yeah, ignore them. Um, so yeah, there are new challenges with this course. Uh, it's not as narrow as the GTA 5 one. However, the vehicles will have to be able to deal with the bumps. I'm just trying to get the camera up high enough to show you a sort of general overview. You can see how steep it gets at the end. From this angle, it's really, yeah. I, I didn't notice how steep it was until you come from, like, you show it from this side. Uh, yeah, you lose quite a lot of height very quickly at the end. Yeah. Lots of new challenges with this course, and we start with the the game's basic pickup truck, the Gravel D series. This is the four-wheel drive off-road version of it with the fastest engine uh, that I can put in it. Off-road capabilities will come into this series an awful lot more. GTA 5, you just sort of had to the fastest car pretty much um, would set set very good tyres. The more power you had, the better it would do. The fact that it was a sports car wasn't massively significant. Uh, the fact that it had sort of normal road suspension wasn't hugely significant to that. Here it will be. Uh, so having having off road an off road vehicle will be an advantage to a point. There are there are some disadvantages to uh, to driving the big four wheel drives. Uh, the first attempt I just couldn't quite get it turned. <laughs> Ended up sort of going through a bush and losing some. I carried on though just to kind of get a feel uh, for the track. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one to drive uh, this as I uh, slightly fall off the cliff. You have a little bit more room for error in that the track is often uh, is quite a lot wider. However, there are that is something to contend with. With the big off-road vehicles, it is very easy to roll. If you try and take just a little bit and not even necessarily cutting the corner if you sort of just pull it very very tight and you kind of hug the apex so easy to roll because of the steepness of some of the curves this first section look straightforward is not it is bumpy um and uh, i found another place to roll a uh, normal fair race video me rolling vehicles uh yeah that first that first section you think is, is nothing it's just a straight uh, flat out corner there are lots of hidden bumps that will throw you off course and uh, will stop your steering or in my case just not take take too shallow a line i should say through that first bit and bump into a wall truck's still working i was trying to get it out of the hole and no this is this not going to work it is uh, yeah, that's, that's well and truly uh, wedged in there. Next time I made it to the first of the jumps and didn't really stick the landing, we uh, <laughs> started to roll. You've got to be careful on the takeoff for that jump. If you are too far over to the right-hand side, I think it is, uh, you can get your car up on two wheels and you take a bit of an awkward landing. I got further on the next attempt, cleared the second of the jumps, couldn't stop in time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, need to break a little bit earlier for that one. And then we fall quite a long way off the cliff and splat. Uh, and we're propped up against a tree. 
Got to be very careful on the landings of some of these jumps. Uh, one thing that it does have in common with the GTA 5 Downhill Chaos is on the landing of some of the jumps can screw you up for the next corner. You've got to be quite early on the brakes for some bits. Uh, this time I got I was better. It was closer. I couldn't quite turn though. And off we go down the mountain again. The, the crashing on beam is... Um, much more interesting, <laughs> I think, than uh, than on GTA 5. Although, what it does mean with the new, with the, well, with the damage physics you get on this game, I should say, is that it is possible to break parts of your car halfway down the course. With something like this, that shouldn't really be a problem with a big off-road vehicle. Um, if you get things wrong, you're probably going to do that. If you get, if you sort of lose control, you are going to bounce uh, off the track and hit something. You're unlikely to break any steering, any suspension, any wheels, any tyres with a vehicle like this that's designed to be dealing with off-road. Once I was starting to get the hang of the track, rolling was becoming a real, real problem. I was getting, I was sort of learning, you know, where where I need to break, um, out sort of where where the best sort of lines are on the course. The problem is when you do so, if you just get a little bit too close to the apex, you roll the vehicle, which I did twice in a row. <laughs> I can't believe I did that twice. Um, yeah, if you if you try and take sort of what I would like the line I would like to take with one of these off-road vehicles that has the higher ride height, then you just sort of fall over a little bit. Uh, so you need the higher ride height to deal with the bumps, but that happens. So you've got to be wary. You've got to be wary of um, some of the corners here, as the elevation change is really rather huge. Um, uh, yeah, you can you can roll over. No no corner cutting uh, on this track. The, you run the risk of, of rolling your vehicle. After a while, I did get the hang of the course with the pickup truck. I I will be honest. These first runs are probably not going to be as quick as some of the later runs. As I get more and more experience driving down this section. I cannot do anything about that. There is in the future we may come back to these vehicles uh, to give them a fair try. But uh, yeah, this is the best way that I, uh, that, I, that I can do it. This corner here is actually quite a nasty one. The, sort of the third, the second main hairpin. As you end up sort of being out of position after the first corner. And I, I ran wide quite a few times on there. The truck was starting to lift. Even on this run, it was starting to lift up. Uh, I was pretty scared of that one going over at that point. Again, got to be very careful with some of these corners. Incredibly easy to roll. Take the jump. Uh, in fact, I didn't even get any air time uh, on that one. The best way to take it, to be honest. You don't really want to be going up in the air because it'll give you all sorts of problems when you come to the landing. Yes, it doesn't look as spectacular, but you actually, I actually want to try and complete this course. So, yeah, the fact that I didn't get any air time there is pretty useful. The, four, the 4x4 is absolutely fine over there. Uh, it took a little bit of a hit, but uh, the suspension can deal with it, which is pretty damn useful. And then it is around the final couple of corners. This is where the, these corners are incredibly stuck. I was surprised I didn't roll on these particularly. Uh, I gave him a little bit of a wider berth, which you need to with a vehicle with this sort of ride height. And there we go. We are across the line. I tried to do a slide, didn't work. I just ended up twisting the back of the truck. Um, yeah, I've also managed to bend the... I'm not quite sure how I've bent the tailgate so that the hinges are working backwards. It doesn't matter. The pickup truck made it to the bottom of the course without any major damage. Up next, it was to a road car. We're going to go for the Grand Marshal. This is the sport version, fastest engine. Uh, with all of these cars, if they have multiple versions, I will use the fastest version of them uh, for the route. Now, this is not designed for dealing with off-road, so the bumps will have a more profound effect on this vehicle. Um, also, the jumps will be a bigger problem. The advantage it does have is it doesn't get thrown about by the little bumps as much because it doesn't have such a bouncy suspension as the off-road vehicle. It can deal with the little bumps, it, well it deals with it by crashing over them, but it doesn't get thrown around. I was an idiot and completely misjudged the corner and wedged it. Just completely in... yeah. Like, I, <laughs> just get... I don't... don't ask. Um, may have got it stuck on, on the first attempt. Next time things are going a little bit smoother. Don't have the same problem with rolling the car over because it doesn't have the same ride height. Didn't ha didn't quite get the jump right on that one. Uh, not only did I tear off the rear bumper and mess up the front bumper, I killed the engine. So uh, off we go down the cliff because that's not going to work. Um, that is the problem that I will have with the road vehicles. It's mostly on that jump because that's got the heaviest, most awkward of landings. Uh, is that you will kill the engine if you take too hard an impact. On GTA 5, we've never had that problem because you couldn't really kill the engine of the vehicle. I didn't have the ride height, but I still managed to find a way to roll my vehicle. Uh, 
Yeah, just clip the bank. I was trying to kind of stay as close to the, the left-hand side of the track on the exit of that corner so that I was in a better position for the second hairpin. It, it, that time I was a little bit too close. Uh, as I said, corner cutting will not work uh, on this track. Particularly, it's very, very unreliable. I'm still not sure how I managed to roll the vehicle there. Um, I snapped the steering off as well, just watching the front, the front wheel wobble. Um, I don't know what caught. I think there was a tiny mound of dirt that I hit and it lifted me up enough so that as I went through the tree that caused me, or that went through the, the sapling almost, that caused me to roll but I don't re I'm not sure on that one I've watched that replay a few times and can't quite figure it out. I tried, I tried on my own to try and roll it there again, couldn't do it um, yeah, didn't have enough turning on that one, I'm not sure, I think I might have actually damaged the steering earlier on and as I tried to go around that corner, we just ran out of steering and bumped our way off the track and wedged it uh, in a hole. We don't quite have the same spectacular tumble all the way down the mountain, but we haven't yet um, on this course. Uh, but yeah, you can still do a lot more damage to your cars, of course, because of this, this game is pretty cool. On the landing of the tabletop, again, it, I think what happened on that one, it doesn't show up very well because I was trying to drive the car and couldn't fiddle with the camera. I had the front of the vehicle just sort of bouncing up in the air, which is why I just couldn't steer because uh, the wheels are in the air. Which, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of an odd one, something that I'm not so much used to deal dealing with um, when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyway, after a while, again, I got a clean run with the Grand Marshal. Didn't take quite as long as it did with the pickup truck because I didn't have the same problem with rolling it uh, basically it gets, gets a little bit of bounced around in that first section not too bad I can fling it into this corner quite nicely I'm quite liking that corner uh, it's quite fun driving around that one got a better line there we go that's more like it uh, through through the second hairpin next these next corners are not really a problem with the road cars you don't have to worry about the steepness of them rolling the vehicle over and is not particularly bumpy uh, in between sections do have to make sure you get all your braking right uh, and all of that kind of thing the jump though could be a potential problem again keeping to the left of the track worked for the grand marshal doesn't really like the landing zone there it's a little bit too rough for it uh, got to get to throw it around getting it to throw it around on some of the bumps there hidden by the shade come up towards the next jump this is the scariest bit for the normal road cars we can get it flung down here quite nicely this jump is an absolute killer of a jump landed it terribly uh, got away with it though, we landed quite heavily on the right hand side, uh, we've damaged the rear bumper but it's fine, we can carry on, the engine is still working, that's a really nasty jump for these road cars to deal with because there's not really a good landing zone and it doesn't really take off very well, uh, but we made it to the end of the course and the Grand Marshal has made it across the line and uh, I may have ripped the rear bumper off, but never mind, so yeah it got down the course with a little bit of damage to the front of the car, pretty much all that damage was done at the same section. I didn't notice until the very end that I'd actually broken the steering on the on the uh, the right side of the car. I'm going to presume when it was on two wheels that that's what did it. Uh, you can see that it's the tracking is a little bit off uh, on this vehicle. I'm trying to show you. Um, yeah, it, it made it to the bottom of the course with that front right wheel pointing at a slightly wonky angle. Again, that's something that uh, I will have to contend with for the road cars further on. They can get damaged halfway down the course. Uh, didn't particularly notice it when I was driving it though, so obviously not a particularly big problem. Our third and final vehicle for today is the supercar, because uh, why not? With the GTA 5 downhill chaos, the supercars were very, very fast. They were very high up the leaderboard because they had the speed. On here, I don't think it is going to be the same case, as there are some difficulties with this vehicle. Uh, the first one is the suspension on this. While it's not, I don't think it's particularly well, much lower than the Grand Marshal, the suspension is very bouncy. Uh, <laughs> it gets it thrown about all over the place. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Uh, hello, I guess it's got a lot softer suspension, which it probably shouldn't have. But um, yeah, it got thrown about a lot on the first section, and then I spun it further on. Uh, that was just poor driving on my behalf. Uh, yeah, the, the thing with the rear-wheel drive cars, it's it can be a little bit tricky to drive. Uh, the supercar on here is a little bit fiddlier to drive. Uh, it can be a little bit twitchy at times. Uh, again, first corner was being a real problem. Uh, <laughs> I just couldn't get it turned in. The minute I sort of started turning it, turning in, it would start hitting the bumps and then it would jump around. Um, yeah, and that made it a real pay. We've already lost control of it before we even got to the first corner. Uh, we're still being bounced around. We're still being... Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we've ripped the back of the car off. Uh, yeah, that was. I was even being a bit cautious in that one, and I just lost control. And once you lose control, especially in a car that like this that's quite fast, 
you are in quite a lot of trouble. I did eventually get round the first section though, uh, and then had some problems with some bumps later on. Uh, there's a tree there, can't drive through that tree. Um, I also love how the headlight, one headlight has popped up and the other still, still looks vaguely normal. Yeah, bumps were a real, real problem for the supercar. I had to be very, very careful of them as again, whoa, trying to do a front flip, but we've rolled it. Every vehicle has now rolled uh, <laughs> this first episode. Yeah, it's that back suspension. It, well, both suspensions get flung around an awful lot. Wasn't expecting to see uh, the back of the car bounce up quite so high uh, when it comes to a supercar. Sure, with the four-wheel drive vehicle with the very soft suspension, very high suspension, that might get thrown around. Uh, I managed to roll this as well. Uh, the, <laughs> the, sort of the first hairpin. Yeah, I was just trying to take a bit of a tighter line. There, there really is, you cannot risk corner cutting on here at all. It, you run such a huge risk of rolling the vehicle, it's not worth uh, It's not worth really trying it again. There we go, as I say that, amply demonstrated by the next attempt. Uh, just trying to take a little bit of a tighter line, trying to take a little bit more speed uh, through there and roll the vehicle. I also noticed that I managed to bend the suspension, the steering on there, so I'm not sure where I was doing the damage to the vehicle. This jump was nasty for the supercar again hit hit the back at the bottom uh, at the back of the car quite hard killed the drive line so we now have no drive that is yeah i could see that going to be a real car killer that jump uh, i could actually carry on i did make it to the end of the course using the downhill momentum but uh, yeah that's not going to be a particularly good time another bump and we get an awful lot of air time and then i roll it <laughs> um yeah it was really getting pinged around quite a lot this this supercar uh, there we end up parked it. I can imagine we're going to find quite a few cars ending up getting stuck in that little hole after a while though I got this supercar to the bottom of the course this took the longest to drive this one down here mostly because I kept failing at this first section it took ages to get this first bit right and uh, get a good line through there even on my even on my fastest run um, it still got thrown about massively I, there is no real way of avoiding that there are just too many bumps and this car is too bouncy around the first hairpin without clipping the inside of the bank and again around the next one not too bad then we've got to worry um, actually we're not going to worry about too much at the moment got to worry about some of the bumps on the outside of the course here and um, this section here not too bad for our road going cars again still doesn't like the bumps particularly not too much uh, problems with rolling on any of these corners then it comes to the jump which we land terribly we land on the nose but that's okay the car can deal with that uh, next corner I very nearly rolled that if I'd been in a car with higher ride height that would have gone over as it is we get away with it really getting chucked around by the bumps uh, on this section can't really get the car stopped very well when half the wheels are in the air can we survive the jump this time take a bit of a heavy hit on the nose but it's fine if we take damage there then it's not going to kill the drive line because this is a mid-engined rear wheel drive car and around the final few corners now it just becomes the very steep sections which are apparently very rough <laughs> you don't notice the bumps in the uh, the big four wheel drive vehicle or so much in the grand marshal uh, i was bumping about so much i just couldn't stop the car in time for the corner and it is across the line and parked in the uh, in the carriage funnily enough supercar not so good at dealing with the off-road sections which is how it should be uh, it should struggle driving on that sort of course however we got it to the bottom without major damage yeah, it's taken a bit of a back, bit back yeah, hold on, English has just given up, I, yeah, solid. Uh, taken a bit of a battering, that's what I was trying to say, uh, the front of the car. However, it survived, the engine still worked, and we just about made it down the course. Yeah, supercar, pretty damn tricky to drive off-road, funnily enough. On to the times, and there is no real surprise. With the, the leaderboard so far, the, the D-Series pickup truck goes first with a 119.8. The Grand Marshal uh, goes second with a 21.1, while the, the Baldi got bounced around so much it ended up with a 23.7. The interesting thing, the times are actually pretty close between all of the cars. It's only four seconds separates the big off-road pickup truck from the supercar. It also goes to show that this is going to be a lot more about off-road capabilities than outright power of the vehicle. So it's going to be slightly different to the GTA 5, but I don't, that's how it should be when it comes to sort of driving this sort of track. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to throwing some more vehicles down this mountain, see if we can get any surprise results from vehicles and what vehicles do generate uh, surprise results. That is it for, for this first episode. I'll put a link to the map in the description so you can download 
download it, have a go at this course yourself. If you would like to leave your suggestions for what vehicles, what mods you would like to see me try out on this course next week, then please do leave them in the comment section. I will only be getting mods uh, from the BeamNG forums. That's the only place I will be downloading mods for this game. Uh, so yeah, let me know what vehicles you want to see me drive. I know, I know exactly the one that everybody is going to say, uh, and that is not going to be done next week. Okay, that will be done sometime in the future, a couple of episodes down the line, because I don't want to use that that vehicle straight away. <laughs> However, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>